Okay, we're back on the uh, Rolex charger that we've uh, modified. We've added our Sonoff switch. Uh, this is an internet driven switch so we can switch this charger on and off via the internet and via our mobile phone. Uh, we can put a time schedule in so it will charge at the times we set. Uh, this is just basically a dumb charger so um, these are things we're, we're adding to it. Um, the thing I'm going to look at today is this little pin here. I've added this red wire into it but there's an additional pin here. We'll see the pilot signal going down to the cable and because this is a tethered we bring our cable in. Now on the units which aren't tethered they will have a wire which will go from this pin to the plug on the front of the unit and what this pin does this pin controls the charge current when you plug your lead in your lead will have a resistor which connects between this pin and the earth connection and that actually sets the maximum current that the charger will ask the car to take uh, the charger doesn't actually control the charge current because it can't it's just powering on a contactor but via the pulse width signal the charger instructs the car as to how much power it can take from this charging point um, now we want to use this um, I want to use this later because um, later I'll be connecting this charger to my uh, MG to prove that all this will actually work and do time charge and I'm going to cheat a little bit because I will be using my uh, adapter box and I will probably reduce the charge current down within the capability of a 13 amp plug just for the the demonstration but before I do that and I start playing I just want to check what voltages I've got on this pin down to earth and I'm basically putting my multimeter there and if we look at the multimeter it's telling us we've got 5 volts DC uh, which I'm happy with um, it's always advisable to do these sort of checks this is live you have got 240 volts around uh, I would not expect to see 240 volts on that pin but believe me I've been caught out in the past that sometimes these pins can float at mains voltage so you know it's a quick little check just prove to yourself that what you're playing with is low voltage so anyway what uh, what we can do is we will get our variable resistor fitted and we'll be back to you in a moment with an update Okay, we're back to the Rolex. I've fitted the variable resistor. I say from this point, I've clipped to earth, so that's the connection we need. So by adjusting this, I can adjust the resistance going into this pin. If we now look at the oscilloscope, we can see that we've got our pulse width and we're at 53%. Now, as I turn this resistance, as I turn the resistance we should start to see that we can reduce our pulse width and you can see our pulse width getting smaller we're now down to an indicated 40% this period has got smaller and we can turn this all the way down and using a variable resistor you can see it, it is variable as it moves and we're now down to a duty of 14% the minimum we should go is 10% so there we are at 10%. Now at that level I've done this little chart and you can see that on this chart we've got our duty cycle, our percentage and our charge amps. 10% will equate to 6 amps charging. That's roughly about 1.5 kilowatts. And you can see as we go up in our percentage 20% will become 12 amps which is 3 kilowatts. 30% 18 amps and we go up until we get to our 53% which equates to 32 amps which is our 7 kilowatt charge rate um, this information was taken from the uh, the document from the uh, open source EVSE charger and this is uh, what they've produced through their research and from what I can uh, test and what I've proved in practice this seems to be pretty accurate and as we can see this unit at normal is at 53% which would equate to the 32 amps so anyway looking back at our pulse width we can see that that is now fully controllable so basically we've now made this dumb charger 
into quite a useful device. Um, I can now set the maximum current on this charger to be whatever I want. So I can go from a 13 amp plug socket up to a 32 amp commando socket or 16, 16 amp socket on a caravan site and I can set this to charge my car with whatever is available. So going back to this uh, that will be the next little mod we'll do and the charger is starting to be not quite so dumb. And who's uh, just helped with the last video so uh, he's all excited because it's his first time of doing this type of thing. There we go.